Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mr Clockwork Apple and it seems to me that every time a game with any amount of difficulty gets released these days games journalists come crawling out of the woodwork to say that it's just like Dark Souls. Everything from Crash Bandicoot to Cuphead gets this and the most recent game to receive it is Monster Hunter World. Well I for one am sick of these lazy lazy comparisons so I'm here today to ask one simple question. Is Monster Hunter World really like Dark Souls? Before we can begin though, we need to ask what it is that makes Dark Souls Dark Souls. Well, I think I've managed to narrow it down to these eight simple traits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each category and we'll see just how well these games actually match up. Difficulty is probably the most famous trait of Dark Souls. And with good reason, I mean Death comes very, very easily from both bosses and regular enemies. Bosses can kill a player in no time at all, and even a well-equipped player can quickly go down to low-level, low-rank enemies if they get ambushed or surrounded. Difficult bosses are also the main selling point of the Monster Hunter series, Monster Hunter World included. Hell, Monster Hunter's been doing difficult boss fights since before Dark Souls started, even before Demon Souls started, it, it began here. But the thing about small enemies is, well... Providing you don't go into a late game mission with absolutely no armor and an unupgraded weapon, small monsters aren't going to be a threat to any hunter. So that's one tick for bosses and one cross for small enemies. Secondly, Dark Souls is a metroidvania. This means that the game is full of twists and turns and hidden passages and secret treasures and bosses and enemies you might not have known about. And most of the World of Dark Souls games is blocked off until you manage to beat a particular boss or find a key. At first glance, Monster Hunter World seems like it fits this description. Maps like the Ancient Forest or the Coral Highlands are very easy to get lost in with lots of twisting, turning passages, tunnels to explore. But it's just as I said, maps. The world of Monster Hunter is separated into different unconnected maps. And you can't just walk from one to the other. Intermap travel can only be done by using the world map, or by choosing a mission to go on. Also, once you reach a map, nothing is locked away. You can just explore the whole thing at your leisure the second you get there. That's one more cross for our comparison. Character building is also a very large part of Dark Souls. You can increase a character's attributes to make them more powerful as you progress through the game and customise them to your own needs. Increasing strength means you can equip a bigger weapon, increasing intelligence means you can use better magic, and so on and so forth. But it can be very easy to build, make a bad character, that doesn't complement the playstyle you're going for, or, or just can't use any of the weapons or equipment. It can be very easy to end up with a completely useless character, meaning you either have to restart the game or find a way to respec your stats, if the game even lets you do that. Not only that, but most weapons have different move sets and speeds and ranges and weights and so on, and the equipment you can use can easily make or break a character. And the amount of effort it takes to upgrade some of this stuff, if you suddenly change your mind that you want to use a different weapon, you're kind of stuck grinding until you can get the upgrade materials necessary. It's very difficult to change your character into another playstyle once you're locked into it. In Monster Hunt, however, all of your stats are directly tied to your equipment, and to nothing else. Weapons are split into 14 categories. Any weapon in a category plays exactly the same as the others. The only ones that have any differences are the different ranged weapons with the types of ammo they can load up. A late game fully upgraded greatsword has the same moveset as a brand new one that you start the game with. The closest you have to a distinct build comes with armor skills that can favor a certain playstyle over a different one, maybe increasing your attack to make you go on the offense or improving your defense or blocking capabilities for a more restrained playstyle. What's most important however in Monster Hunter is that if your current approach to an enemy isn't working, you can always very easily grab a completely new set of armor, new weapon and try again in a different way. That's three crosses so far, this comparison is not looking good. Dark Souls Combat is clunky. In a good way. You can't just run up to an enemy and hammer the attack button. Trying to do that is a very excellent way to get very dead very fast. You need patience to learn how to fight in a Souls game 
and combat mostly revolves around waiting for an opening, or trying to create an opening so you can target an enemy's weak point or hit it with a backstab or a parry. Monster Hunter is mostly the same, at least in terms of clunkiness, although once again, Monster Hunter did it first. When fighting a monster, you can't just swing at it wildly. Monsters have weak points that you need to target and armoured parts that will deflect your weapon and reduce damage, meaning you need to be well positioned in order to take advantage of any opening you can find. Now, this may seem similar enough to earn another tick, but, and it's a big but, Bosses in Monster Hunter aren't static. A Dark Souls boss is strictly contained within its arena. Monsters, on the other hand, will wander around the map, meaning you have to track them down before you can fight them. You chase after them when they try and flee, they'll run off to try and find food if they're hungry, they'll retreat to their nest if they get tired. And other monsters can even turn up and ambush you during the fight to make life harder for you. Although perhaps the most important difference, however, is the time it takes to fight a monster. Dark Souls fights are a DPS test. You kill the boss before it kills you. Monster Hunter fights can last upwards of half an hour, even longer than so some of the late game battles, and you require pacing to succeed. Dark Souls is a sprint. Monster Hunter is a marathon. Half a point. You know, this may come as a surprise, but Dark Souls is dark. Shocking, I know. Most of the plot for a Dark Souls game is hidden away in item descriptions and secret dialogue that is very, very easy to miss if you're not constantly looking for it. Characters arrive, they go crazy, they die, and every twisted monstrosity that you can fight has some kind of depressing backstory that, that makes you feel bad when you put it out of its misery. Not only that, but there's this constant air of death and pain and misery that hangs around to keep the player tense at all times. Monster Hunter's lore is mostly found within the Japan-only art books, which I don't have, and even if I did have them, I can't read Japanese. The only lore that's really found in the game is monster biology and whatever current events are currently eventing. As for the tone, Monster Hunter has talking cats that make puns. Dark Souls multiplayer comes in one of two forms, co-op and PvP. Players can enter your world to either help or hinder you, aiding you in boss fights, stabbing you in the back. The invasion mechanic is easily the defining trait of the Dark Souls multiplayer, and it's something that really sets the series aside from other co-op and multiplayer games. Monster Hunter only has co-op, so that's one final tick for co-op and one final cross for PvP. So with that done, let's look at the final score. So yeah, Monster Hunter World is its barely even one third Dark Souls. Both games have slow and heavy combat and very difficult boss fights, but frankly that's it. And once again, I said the Monster Hunter franchise has been doing it for longer than Dark Souls, so should I say that Monster Hunter is one third Dark Souls or is Dark Souls one third Monster Hunter? Either way, both these games are a great series, although I really wish people would stop using this just as a very lazy way to say that a game is difficult. Judge a game by its own merits, not by what it isn't. Monster Hunter is not Dark Souls. But they are both great games. As I said, I fully recommend either one to anyone who wants a challenging game. I have been Mr. Clockwork Apple. Goodbye.